Hey, this is Max at 343 Labs. We're a music production school based in New York City, Berlin, and online. And today, I'd like to show you a clip by one of our instructors, John Selway, which is taken from 343 TV, which airs right here on our channel several days per week. Now, if you want to watch the full stream, head over to studio.343labs.com, link in the description, which is our new producer hub where you can meet other producers, get free content, collaborate, and get feedback on your music. Enjoy the clip. The, the idea behind it was to combine uh, generative features so it can kind of it kind of has a mind of its own that you can steer in a very particular ways. And that process of steering it um, is highly musical, performative, and hopefully intuitive. Like it's a very complex looking device at first glance, but once you get a feel for everything that's there, um, there are a lot of unique ways where you can kind of let it uh, generate and develop over time while you kind of play with it. Mm -hmm. um and tell a story by interacting with it which will hopefully make more sense oh it's totally um, going to make sense because we... we've already gone over it a little bit like we spent some time a couple days ago and you were showing me the ropes and you know because i've just i'm a i'm a beginner with this here just like the viewers are going to be since it's brand new and getting you know getting used to a new interface and looking at all the little details so that was really helpful um and yeah it you anyone who's been watching this for a while knows i like using step sequencers and I like using elements of r just random elements, whether it's even just randomly playing a bunch of notes on a keyboard or whatever, especially, you know, when you're not trying to be traditionally musical, like melody, chord progression, bass line, like if you want to just come up with interesting patterns, I love doing that. And so this is, you know, going to be another powerful tool to, to do that. And, um, it's going, you know, it's a step sequencer, but it's able of, it's sort of, it's a, creates kind of uh random things but it's also controlled enough that it isn't just totally random like you can kind of guide it in a way and generate really interesting melodies and rhythms um so yeah that's what you're let's get into it let's uh let's get your screen share going and why don't you give us just a quick overview of what it is and what you can do and then we'll go from there sounds great john yeah let's do it is my <laughs> screen up right now or are we it is uh, about to be or there Let we go we're live and so um yeah i'm not gonna get too uh like fussy about all the individual details because we do have a full walkthrough video on right. our manifest audio youtube channel so tell me what you but are gonna do the basic lay of the land is here's our 16 steps and um that may seem somewhat limiting at first to only have 16 but when you look at how the lfos and the selectable randomization work um it starts to become almost a benefit to only have the 16 steps. So, sure. Because for me, it, it forces me to think about creating longer patterns in a different way that yields um, very interesting results. I want to so, hear, I'm sure you've got something there. You've already started working on something. So I want to hear, an, like, a, let's get into some sound here. Yeah, yeah. So this is a completely raw default state. All the steps are on they're all set to the default pitch of C3. And I'll just press play with this uh, electro little drum clip here. See if that sync cleans up on the stream there. There we go. Um, so uh, yeah, just going through a default uh, sine wave on wavetable, I'll spice that up soon enough. But yeah, basic pattern here. And what I can do is just click this global dice button, this is going to. That's already really the nice. Steps, the on, the off, the pitch, the velocity, all the different uh, sort of parametric dimensions of each step are randomized instantaneously and then forced through whichever scale I select here. Well, so yeah, because right, right away you started out with just one C on every step. But as, as yeah. soon as you hit random, we didn't hear a bunch of random chromatic notes. We heard a nice melody, and that's because you're quantizing all those notes into a scale. You know, similar to yeah. like what Live has in the in the MIDI clips now, or in the MIDI scale device, right? Exactly. So if I switch to chromatic, the note, yeah, one of the notes is sounding a little, a little 
off color there. So I'll switch back to Aeol Aeolian. Which is Always minor. I think of Ioli, maybe I'm getting hungry. It's almost dinner time here, but um, no. Uh, we can switch to some other scales later. Choose your uh, key here and you can transpose everything manually. All right, I think I'm actually accidentally in front of the transpose there. I'm gonna move myself up here above the device so I don't block anything that you're doing. Yeah, so I'm just gonna add a little randomization to the oscillator one position on wavetable here. So what and you're I'm doing gonna... right now, just in the context of, of production here is super, super important because your sequencer, it's not just randomizing notes. It's randomizing note lengths and sustain and velocity. And yeah, so it, your I'm, instrument, how, depending on the instrument you're using, like how the envelopes are set and whether or not parameters of the instrument are reacting to velocity is going to make a huge difference in, in the sort of the expression of what comes out of the sequencer. Yeah, so right now velocity is just controlling amp. I could assign it to the filter frequency a little bit and get some action there. But the randomization takes a random impulse, every incoming MIDI note, it's assigned to the oscillator here, but we're not hearing a note glide, which also gets randomized because I'm still in poly mode. So I'll just flip wavetable into mono mode. Now we're getting that nice tie. So let's just explore uh, one step. I will, uh, I'll just set the cycle to that one step. So this is the length, how many steps we're including our sequence. All right. And so this is the the step uh, pitch, obviously, and because the tie is on, when I change them, they glide <laughs> around. Whereas if it's set to the normal, I got gotcha. you. So you're, you're able to sustain uh, notes over, or n sustain steps over to the next step. Yeah, it's designed exactly like a 303. You want certain steps to tie into the next one, exactly. And so here's the on-off for that step. So there it is again velocity and the note length here super short and percussive for example um, and then the pitch for each step can be governed uh, manually meaning that it won't be randomized that's so kind of locking the step to only being controlled by the user um, or controlled by chance in which case um, yeah, it's not available for automation anymore due okay. to issues with Max and, and Live that are long-standing, but I've found the best possible workaround I think exists. Awesome. And uh, you can also have each step controlled by one of four LFOs. When I toggle that on, LFO is enabled, and now I have to assign a modulation amount. And the central pitch it starts at. And so then here's the LFO. I can increase the rate. Okay, what, what, back up the for shape. a second. Hold on, right. hold on a second. All right, just, what just happened? <laughs> so, yeah, I love the LFOs, controlling steps with LFOs. We're going to get into that very soon. Um, before doing a deep dive on that, actually, I just want to show, for example, um, what, what, what these locks are for. So, um, I'm just going to mute this for a second so it's not quite so annoying for everyone. Uh, each of these five sort of uh, parameter lanes govern the randomization of that parameter for all eligible steps. What does eligible mean? Well, if the mute on this first step is unlocked, um, then if I hit randomize, I can randomize by this probability whether that step will go on or off. Okay. If I want it to always be on and never be randomized or always be off and also never be randomized, just like giving me full control, um, then I can lock it. So that's what those mm -hmm. locks are for. And that allows us to specify the certain parameters of certain steps will be fixed in a particular state uh, and exempted or protected from randomization, essentially. All right, so that's, so that's awesome. So you could come up with like, you might randomly generate a pattern that you like and yes. then you can lock down the parts of the pattern which are working musically for you and then decide which steps can evolve and change. But so you're locking sort of, you know, the musical idea that works that you don't want to lose and then you can figure out how to 
think see which steps can change in an interesting way without breaking the pattern too much, right? 100%. Cool. So I'm gonna use this mute. Uh, Let's try toggle. that. That's gonna turn all the steps on. So I just wanna show something quickly with, for example, I've just got a four step cycle here. And now what's interesting, you know, like I can uh, randomize globally or per parameter. So I just randomize the pitch. And that's actually what I wanna do. These shuffle buttons turn on auto randomization, which means that a parameter that's auto randomized will be randomized at an interval specified in bars with this slider here. So if I enable auto randomization for pitch, every two bars, they're all gonna randomize by 50% and I can increase that amount and I can constrain the range of notes within which randomization is allowed to occur. So they won't go too, so too high or too low higher. around where you exactly. want to be. Okay. So this is like a little auto trance is what I call this. The minor scale, the four steps, the two bar auto pitch. But now if I enable the auto mute along with it, there's a possibility that we could end up with two bars of silence because all four might get randomized to be turned off at once. So that's so where I you definitely want to lock the stuff so on. it doesn't, yeah. 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 So that's I could great. lock these two. And now I'll just set it to a three-step cycle. Now we're getting a nice little Heniola thing going on. So doing this, randomizing the pitch every two bars, it's making a progression. It's kind of like making, oh, it's not exactly making a chord progression, but you could figure out based on the notes that, that, are, that it's generating a, a progression and a pattern yeah, that you if, could then write chords think, around. Exactly. I mean, like we can track all this into a MIDI track, which we'll do later. And those three notes that are stepped out right now could be considered arpeggiated notes of a chord. So then thinking of it as a progression that way is exactly right. Um, so now what I want to show is just quickly that this hemiola, this three over four pattern is running freely, which is great, but I want it to reset um, rhythmically every bar. So I'll turn the reset on. Oh, okay, so you've got three steps, so it's kind of going out of phase with your typical even number of bars, right? Yeah, and, so but you're, you then now, you, you can hear it. And then you, you can, can hear it re-trigger it every so often, and it kind of helps ground and make it seem more regular than it is, I guess? So now if I set it to two every two bars, um, maybe let's make it a six-step cycle. You'll hear a bigger, yeah, it'll be more obvious. Actually that was a nice off, pattern right there. Off. It reminds me of a track. There, there it reset at the start of the bar. So it keeps restarting every two bars. So you can set whatever interval uh, you want along with whatever cycle you want. And so how the cycle works is right now it's six steps in length. That's the cycle length there. All right. But I can, I can move those six steps around by changing the start uh, step. And the steps within the cycle boundaries are always a lighter gray, and that dark gray is um, indicating those steps are outside of the cycle. But I can also, within the six steps, uh, move the, rel the relative start point within that by adjusting this offset, which now, now it's seeing this Step four is the first step. That the offset is it's subtle, but it's really nice because like right now you, this pattern is really good. You should record this one, but like changing where the first step is makes a subtle evolution that doesn't interrupt, you know, the kind of hypnotizing groove that you've got going on. I really like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's like one of many fun things you can do. So with many. All this stuff. So I'm just going to... Um, go back to a full 16 bar thing or 16 step thing and I know you like the sequence you want me to record it but just to show the endless right. worlds that just goes and goes. can sort of unfurl 
I'm gonna toggle the uh, the global auto randomization. Oh, here we go. So uh, all the parameters are going to start automatically randomizing it, whatever their interval is. So I could say the pitch I want to randomize every four bar, four yeah four bars. Okay. And the velocity. Yeah, let's do the tie and the pitch every four bars. So we're going to be hearing a lot more one. variation now. Yeah, but by um, making the pitch and tie a bit longer, it's creating like a longer phrase that the mute is then reinterpreting twice before the pitch and tie change again because the mute's happening every two bars. Um, nice. There are a lot of different ways to play with this, but here's a global interval. So if I just say, you know what? I want everything to change every two bars. I can override it. I can also override the percentages. And then let's say, oh dang, that's hot. I can just boom, click the global auto randomization and turn all of them off. And the sequence essentially is frozen. No, that's that really state. important in the interface to, to get it to stop doing the evolution on a dime because you might have a second to decide whether you want to keep it or not so having one button that'll just okay stay where you are right yeah it's, and that's, that's really why, powerful like if you're trying to let it kind of find its own way into some of these patterns uh i think a four bar interval is maybe like gives you a little more time to make that decision sure so yeah two bars is like that's a pretty tight window to decide if you uh, if you're happy with it um, but, uh, yeah, so very important. Um, the reason the parameters, uh, are not automatable when they're right. available for randomization is that if you're continuously randomizing parameters, then they, uh, end up filling up lives undo history. That's the thing with certain max for live uh, devices that are generative, right? It, it's kind of a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I've managed to avoid it completely. Um, and, you know, what would happen if the undo history filled up is live ultimately ends up crashing, which right. is obviously uh, no go. But these parameters will not save with the set um, in this chance mode. So what I need to do if I want to save this uh, sequence state when I just go to my uh, file menu, save live set, I got to click this little disk icon first. And you'll notice what that does is it transfers all the step states, uh, <clears throat> all the step states from chance to manual. And when okay. it's manual, live can see them again. And you notice now that if I start changing that first step, that shows up now in the undo history. So cool. that's a little inside baseball, maybe for uh, some of the viewers, but just a little. That's really. Uh, I think that's really valuable. The madness. Yeah. It's yeah. not too inside because it's it goes directly to usefulness and workflow. I hope you enjoyed that. Again, if you want to watch the full stream, head over to studio.343labs.com. Link in the description below. And that is our new producer hub where you can find free content, collaborate with other musicians, get feedback on your music, and just meet a community of like-minded artists and producers. See you next time.